Hello, this is Terry Lou Dansler with MyiPadLive.com and today I'm going to demonstrate using Photo Toaster as my primary processing application. Photo Toaster is at, on my bottom row here with the camera lens and when you open up an image here in Photo Toaster you have quite a few choices. Um, at this point I'm just going to be demonstrating bringing in a photo directly from my photo library and I've created an album called Photo Toaster and I'm going to pick the orange truck to start. And after the image is open across the top you can go back to where you were by finding picking some other choices that we just saw on the previous screen where you also have the choice of cropping, rotating, straightening, removing noise and you have these new brushes, lightening brushes. So I'm not going to, I like my composition. I don't want it cropped or rotated. I don't think it needs straightened. And so I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to go on the bottom row and where the little globe is. And you have quite a few presets. Um, you can start here at a preset. Um, and then build on it, or you can start at a preset and remove things, whatever direction you want to go. So when you open up the presets in the lower left-hand corner, it's pretty small, but you can see that you've got basic, and if you tap on that wheel, you can see that you have deluxe. The next choice is supreme and my presets. And so the first thing I'm going to do is basics and I'm just going to scroll through some of these for you. So in the, some of the basic choices you can recover your highlights and it, when you recover your highlights you can see the checkbox goes into the choice that you picked. In order to see on um, the ones that you or the excuse me the before and the after if you just tap and hold on the image you can see the before you did any changes to it and after. Here's a little more dramatic from Chile. If you tap and hold, you will get the before and after that selection. So then if you go into Deluxe, you also can scroll and you have quite a few more hidden, so don't forget to scroll to the end of the row to check out different options. You have some sepia choices, and again, you can go before and after. And then in the Supreme, you have quite a few different things that were added as far as layer choices and let's go into a quite dramatic grunge look and again the box gets checked when you go into the grunge when you for what selection you've picked again before and after so I'm actually going to go back to the basics and I'm going to pick the choice of happy and see what that's doing. I think that one's a little too bright. Um, so I think actually the, what I'm going to pick instead is recover highlights, which is much less dramatic of a change, again, between the before and after. It pretty much just takes those clouds and darkens the sky quite a bit, recovering the highlights. All right, so then if you tap above that wheel on the corner there you'll get, go back to your all the choice of your settings and along the bottom row in the middle there if I tap on the sun option there it will turn blue if I tap on it you can see you have the exposure settings um, temperature lighten blacks many choices here and right above the exposure is a circle with some boxes in it and so you have two ways that you can do things from here. Again, here's um, some of the choices that you have. I just recovered the highlights, so that's the box that's checked. Um, again, these aren't the same choices that you had before. As you see, we have other choices like cool and hot and calm, contrast and so forth. So I'm actually going to just stick with this, um, recover highlights. I'm going to tap on the box that'll um, give me my choices here. 
and I'm going to instead move these sliders. And I'm going to start with the blacks and I'm going to move just the blacks just a tad. See, if you darken it too much you can see how it affects the whole image um, quite dramatically. So I'm going to add just a little bit of blacks and I'm also going to add just a little bit more contrast. You can see again just adding a little bit of contrast. Now again to be able to see the before and after. Right now I'm just doing some pretty subtle changes. And if if for some reason if you were to hit do the temperature and move the temperature way off and you weren't happy with that, if you just double tap it'll or just tap on the um, circle itself, it'll center itself again. And how you can tell is if you've moved some of these, um, they will actually have a box with the X versus, or excuse me, the circle will have an X in it versus the circle without an X. So if I again tap on my contrast, you can see that the X disappeared. So if I over contrast it, I could bring it to the center and move it just slightly back over again. All right, so that's your first um, choice on the bottom. And now I'm going to go to the FX. And as long as I am staying in the box with the choices versus tapping here, that's you'll be able to go right to either presets or make your own selections. So right now there's no FX effects on these. No effects. FX is usually abbreviation for effects, I find. And you can see you have lots of different choices here. Again, you can be really dramatic and pick that one. Um, you can go stark, totally a different look, um, cross-processing, and just a ton of different choices here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick sharpening, and then I'm going to tap on my sliders here. And as you see, it sharpened the image a little bit. If you, you can see where the native um, choice would have been is at the beginning um, because there is no X again in the choice. So as you move the slider over just a bit, you can see how the sharpening is affected. And we don't want to over sharpen images. Um, when you start to over sharpen the image, you'll start getting some a lot of noise a lot of times. Things will just be too popped. Um, you can see the detail in the clouds, depending on the look you're getting. Um, but in this case, I'm doing a lot of subtle changes rather than some big ones. So here we have just a subtle amount of sharpening. Again, here was the original image. And so again, just really nice subtle, subtle things happening here. Intensify. I'm going to actually intensify the image just a bit too. Um, you can see how the truck starts to pop and the green colors start to come in a little bit more. Um, um, to me, that gives, gives more depth to the image. All right, now we're going to move on to the third choice. And the third choice has to do with the vignette. And I'm going to just demonstrate this. Um, these choices here. So right now if I was to move, I can't move any of these other sliders because I don't have a vignette size. Um, so until you actually choose the vignette size, then you'll have these other choices that you can make adjustments to. So you can actually do a white vignette versus a dark vignette. You can add um, saturation to your vignette if you put a color filter on it and you could add oops, let's get some color here so you can actually see it you can add some saturation to the color more different saturations and what this also can be very useful for so I'm actually tapping that so it goes back to its normal native spot um, I'm going to just affect the vignette just a tad and you can see the difference between a soft and a hard vignette in the brightness here. Let's make the vignette size a little bigger. 
And if you take the softness and bring it all the way up, it'll they'll blend in really softly. And if you make it hard, you can actually make yourself a framed oval. So lots of different choices here. So I'm going to keep my vignette pretty darn soft and, and bring it in um, the softness in almost to 100%. And brightness, I'm going to bring up just a bit. Um, don't want to quite see it in the corner so dramatically, so if you bring in the brightness, it'll soften it in the clouds quite a bit. And again, you have the saturation choice that will come into play. And I'm going to, for this demonstration, I'm, as you see, I'm going to move the vignette size up again. And why I'm doing that is I want you to see how the blur gets affected um, quite a bit with the vignette. So even though you would have a vignette um, of a particular softness and size and so forth, you can also blur it quite a bit to add a whole new different effect to it. In my case, I'm just going to tap it, get rid of the blur completely, and move the vignette size down again, and just affect it just slightly. So here was the before and the after. So all these subtle changes are starting to add up. Now, this is where I'm going to start having some fun. And I'm going to look at the choices that I have for um, some filter or some paper and textures and so forth. However, um, before I do this, I'm actually going to save this image without any textures and without any borders on it. And I'm going to save it to my clipboard. So a copy to clipboard. And it'll take a bit to render. This is a full size 8 megapixel image. I didn't make it any smaller. So in that case, anytime your images are larger, they do take a little bit longer to save. I'll be able to explain a little bit more why I saved it to the clipboard, but you'll you'll understand here in a minute. Um, so from here you have again you can have the choices where they you get to pick a preset that they've already made exist here, and I also purchased some of the additional textures and. Um, I guess considering a leak and the leak two and so forth, some of these are actually more than textures. But you have two folders. If you tap on the folder up on the top where it has the number one, you can also, for 99 cents, get additional choices here. And you can see that you have quite a few more different choices. And in this case, I'm going to make my image a little dirty. Now, for me, this intense, dirty look is too much. So again, if you tap on where you have your choices, you have a choice of intensity. And this is where I find it very useful, is to bring down the intensity so you get to just add, I mean, you can bring this dirty look and make it very dramatic or you can bring the intensity quite down so you can hardly see it, but I want to be able to see it up in those clouds more so than on the truck itself. So there's going to be a fine line here where I can match the two up. All right, so now I've got my dirty filter over it. Now, another thing that I wish that I could do is not only do I want to put the dirty filter over it, but I really like, in folder two, I like this clouds. I love what that does to the clouds. But as you noticed, when I tapped on clouds, I lost dirty. Now, so this is where bringing it to the clipboard and also bringing it into another app, which I will demonstrate in a minute, will work. So after I have it on dirty again, I'm gonna have to lower the intensity so I can get it to where I want. I just showed you what would happen if I tried to add two of these texture layers on top of each other and it didn't work. 
So I'm going to again bring the, t the intensity up just a bit so it's showing up in the sky and not so much on the truck. And now for my last choice I also have some borders. And again I purchased the additional borders and so I have three folders of borders. And you can look at the borders this way and look at them in the different folders so you can see there's lots of choices. Or again you can look at them and see them directly on your image yourself. Whatever works best for you. Um, what I'm going to actually do is because in this this view I can't choose the width of the border so I am going to be picking the brushed to choice and I'm going to add a little bit more width to it. A mm, little bit more here. So now I've changed lots of different items on here and if you tap on the image this was the original and this is what I've got going for me right now. From here what I want to do is I'm going to tap on the upper right hand corner with the box with the arrow and instead of saving this image or putting it to the clipboard like I did last time I'm actually going to send it to an app. So it's the on the bottom row there is send to app option. Again it's going to take a bit to render. It's um, applying all these choices that I have picked and it's going to open up the different apps that are connected to it and my choice is going to be one of my favorites Image Blender. So I'm tapped on Image Blender. It opens Image Blender up for me and now it asks do I want to put the picture in the foreground or the background. It took me a minute but Believe it or not, the lower left hand box is background and the lower right hand box is foreground. So at this point, I'm going to pick background, which will be the lower left hand box. Puts it in there. And as you see, it only put one image in and the other box is empty. So this is step one of me saving a particular layer and bring it in into the image blender. So now I'm going to save this and I'm going to tap on the save but it's actually not going to save it. I'm actually going to go to another app again and I'm going to go back into Photo Toaster. Not going to recommend it right now in the middle of my demonstration here. But obviously I am recommending it. Alright, so here we have again the the choice of having the dirty on there with this frame that's in white and what I'm going to do is tap on the upper right hand corner with the box and the arrow and oops nope that's the wrong way I'm going to actually tap on the upper left hand corner and I'm going to go to my clipboard and I'm going to paste that original image that had a few of the changes to it but not the texture and not the border. And now I'm at that point again. So here's my start, my launching point. And I'm going to now go to the textures. And if you remember correctly, I wanted to add a, well, let's see, oops, disappeared on me. On number three, oh, well, it's not letting me do it that way. So let's tap on there and then if I go to number two I guess that's why there's only two folders in there I'm looking at those clouds again so now I get to add the clouds that I wanted to add and I'm going to then go to the choices where I have the sliders and now I can add and subtract intensity and in this case I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put the intensity up pretty high just bring up some real drama up in that sky and as you see when you tap on it it actually did bring it into a lot more places than just the sky. You can see how it adds a cloud effect and shadows and so forth in different areas. So now I'm going to go to the border choice and I'm going to pick the third folder here and last time I added a white border 
And for those of you who are familiar with image blending, if you add a white border, it will have be a place that images will blend into. So in this case, I'm going to be now adding a black border that is going to be thinner. So there's my black border, but I'm going to actually thin it down quite a bit. And you'll see that it will end up doubling the border for me. So now I've got clouds with a thin, torn black border. And here I get to go back and I get to send it to the app again. So now I've created actually myself two layers, actually three if you consider what was in my clipboard. I'm going to go back into Image Blender. And now you have to remember that the foreground is the lower right hand corner. So if when you tap foreground, it'll load the image into the other corner. Now, okay, so in normal blending mode, you if you move the slider all the way over to the left, that was the first image that I did with dirty in the white. And here is the image that I did with clouds and the black torn border. So I have a choice of blending these two options together. And one of my favorite blending modes is darken. So I'm going to actually use the blending mode darken. And you can see how this border has taken on its a totally a different personality than if I would have just had one border. And I'm going to end up blending somewhere in here. And now I get to save this image to the other app and my choice is going to be back to Photo Toaster. Now Photo Toaster is going to open up that blended image for me. You can see how the border has actually been created as a unique border that Photo Toaster doesn't have all by itself, but now you can create your different borders. All right, so one more step that I'm going to share with you is their new brushes. In the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to select the brush brushes, and that'll bring me to a new window with a plus and a minus down at the bottom. Now the plus will be adding light, and the minus will be subtracting light. And in this case, if you want to, you can zoom in to certain areas in a pinch motion and if I wanted to add light for example to underneath this wheel well I can just paint in there and it will add some light. I'm not sure if I can you can see it showing up too much on the screen so I'm going to instead make some dark areas and I'm going to darken these corners and kind of create my own vignette. So I'm starting in the upper left hand corner and you'll see how it starts darkening. Now I've darkened in that tree too much. So I can go right back to the lightning brush and paint it back in. Go back to the darkening brush. And now I'm going to, in the foreground in front of that truck, there's some lightning areas there and I can just basically hand paint in my own vignette. And again, this these changes will affect the border and I'm moving up on the right hand side of the image across the top you can just see how it just starts creating a whole new look kind of darkening those clouds a little bit more I can go back to the plus pull some of it out so again it's just a back and forth motion got rid of some more of that light in the foreground So you can direct, direct your eye right to where you want it to go. Actually, I am going to paint in that tree just a tad. So, there was the before, and there's the after. You can see in certain areas that might be a little bit more than you want. I'm not really happy with the left-hand side, so I'm going to actually just kind of brush it out by going to the, the plus sign. 
and go to the minus and just lightly brush things back in again. Let's see if I can do a little bit better job this time. Let's see, before and after. I'm going to again take away some of that again. You can see where my finger's painting here. It might actually have disappeared almost completely now, before and after. Here's another choice. If, if you want to start over, I can actually clear all the darkening. And I can clear all the lightning and basically start over again. So I can go to the darken brush and I can repaint that in just a little more subtly. Moving into the tree again, to the foreground. Not so heavily handedly in the in the sky this time. Alright, let's see what we get before and after. Oh, much better. Alright, so now I can check it, hit the checkbox in the upper right hand corner. That'll apply that brushing technique I just did. I'm going to tap in the upper right hand corner again and this time I'm going to save it to my photo library. And now I can send it right to my photo um, toaster album and also to my camera roll. It will save to both places at the same time. And there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, give Photo Toaster a try. There's lots to it. There's lots of control. And as you see, um, nothing was permanent. They're all changes that you can change um, after the fact. And create your own layers and do some blending. You can go into lots of different apps. Hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to talking to you next time.